Today I'm sharing some of my garden books with you and I'm going to do a series on all my garden books that I possess, which isn't very many. This is a series of books, as you can see, in a very bad condition. They were Mike's mum's books and they're from 1977 and it was one of these things where you buy them every week or every month, I don't know, and it builds up a collection. Now in total there are, let me see, 51 books and I've had to write them all down because each one in the index, which I've also got, the index just gives you a page number if you're looking up, say, how to grow peas or whatever, gives you a page number. It doesn't tell you which issue it's in. So I wrote them all down and it also is a quick reference for me, say, so look at the index book. So I put, for example, book one is onions and goes from page one to page 28. So if it tells me the index a page, then I can see which book it's in as well. Now, I've also written for quick reference. Each book does a main item. So, for example, this one's onions, but they also do a little bit on something at the end, which is either something like a herb or an item of a way to garden or something similar. So this one is obviously onions and then a calendar for the garden. And then number two, potatoes and mint. Number three is peas and then planning a plot and all year round greens. So perpetual spinach. Number four is lettuce as the main item and then a little bit on orange trees in pots and frame gardening. Issue five is tomatoes with a little bit about bay tree and making garden frame. Six is apples with seeds and sowing information. Seven is cabbages and then a little bit on sewing techniques and Chinese lantern berries. Issue eight is black currants with a little bit about fennel and moving seedlings. Issue nine is runner beans and then a little bit about fruit in your garden. Number 10 is about rhubarb mainly and then a little bit about Chinese cabbage and watering. Number 11 is mostly about cucumbers and a little bit about weeds. Number 12 is mostly about cherries and then a little bit about animal pest and Hamburg parsley. 13 is celery with a little bit about fruit failure. 14 is swedes. 15 is kale with a little bit on container crops and chives. 16 is about plums. For some reason there's nothing after that. 17 is broccoli and a little bit on endive for salads. 18 is radish with a little bit about herbs in the garden. 19 is gooseberries with a little bit on conserving water, salsify and so on. 20 is spinach with a little bit on greenhouses and kohlrabi. 21 is mostly about strawberries and a little bit on greenhouse equipment. 22, asparagus and greenhouse management. 23, beetroot and a little bit on cress and compost. 24 is spring cabbage and a little bit about loganberries and manure. 25, grapes outdoor and a little bit on making a plastic greenhouse and parsley. 26 is turnips and a little on nuts. 
27 is pears and a little bit on basil. 28 is about cauliflowers, a little on capers and harvesting and storing. 29 peppers with a bit on drainage, irrigation and horseradish. 30 is leeks with a little bit on green manuring and lamb lettuce, it's corn salad. 31 is red and white currants with a little bit on vegetable propagation and marjoram which is a herb like organo. 32 is mushrooms, a little on blueberries and digging. 30 is peaches with a little bit on shallots. 34 is carrots, a little bit on hydrophonics and rosemary. 35 is courgettes and marrows with a little bit on fences, walls, hedges, fennel, dill, herbs and I put lavender, there must be a tiny mention of it there because it's nowhere else. 36 is raspberries and a little on ornamental vegetable gardens, asparagus peas, wing peas and a few other bits and pieces there. 37 is Brussels sprouts with a bit of vegetables out of season and tarragon. 28 is sweet corn and about herbs, balm, borage and space saving ideas. 39 is blackberries and a bit on okra or ladies fingers as we call them here and labour saving gadgets. Fossil wants to talk, I don't know if you can hear her. <laughs> 40 is about French beans and a bit on caraway and cloches, one. Aubergines in the next one, cloches two and celerac. 42, chicory and how to cope with difficult sites and watercress. 43, globe artichokes and a little on bean sprouts and organic gardening. 44 is broad beans and a bit on the herb savoury. 45 melons and a bit on sorrel, fruit cages, nets and supports. 46 parsnips, pollination charts, cardan, which is like globe artichokes. 47 Jerusalem artichokes and exotic passion fruit and making garden paths. 48 greenhouse grapes and a bit on garlic and plastics in the garden that'd be interesting to compare from the 1970s 49 is apricots and a bit on plantia quince tree and the right shed 50 is figs and a bit on pruning tropical tomato tamarillo 51 sea kale and a little on pumpkins and saving seeds now, the interesting thing about this is I like it for some good information if I'm starting to grow something for the first time. Bear in mind these are from England, so obviously the weather and timings are completely out to Cyprus where I live, but it gives me a good guide of how to do things. The biggest downside of these books, which I take no notice on, is anything to do with pest bear in mind it was the 70s the pest um how to get rid of them is always about chemicals there's no natural rem remedies in here or anything like that i purely use them for how to start off items when to harvest and so on and so forth um, as i say i read a little bit to you there about plastics Things like that are quite interesting how concept of things were different and on my lives I often read things like that from these books so you get some idea of how things, thoughts were different. I've read one out to you, I think it was something about um, ideas how to make different tools, homemade tools for use in your garden. And some things were quite funny, but some things were really good ideas that I don't think people are actually using anymore. 
So some of those items are interesting and might be things we've forgotten or ways that we don't use anymore. So they're quite interesting too. And I actually read out on a recent live about, from these books, Water Conservation. Again, that was very interesting from the 70s and how things are different now. And again, a lot of these give us good ideas for homestead gardens, if you've got an allotment, how to conserve water there and so on and so forth. So if I've read any of those titles out and you want to know more about them or particularly the funny items, I will be reading some out in my lives. And there is some very good information there as well. As I say, on the back of them all is a like a gardening dictionary as well. So we're up to D now. So any words you don't know what they are to do with the garden on the back of each one becomes a little dictionary such as double digging. What does double digging mean? And disbudding and so on and so forth. So they're quite handy as well. Droop, earthing up, spalia. Oh, that's just an advert. <laughs> so very good information. I do like these. These are probably the book I go to if I want to read completely um, how to start something up if I've got no idea of it. And there's just about everything you could want to know starting gardening. It also covers if you show your vegetables in like shows and it tells you what they're looking for in the shows. It also shows you that. So if you're into doing that kind of thing, it's very good for that. Let's see, for example, what are we on? Asparagus. Tells you all the pests and diseases. Exhibition tips. Here we go, for example. So this is asparagus. And it says because asparagus is very sensitive to changes in temperature, it's best not to cut shoots too hard for a week or, or so before the show. This way, even if there's a sudden cold spell, you'll still have reasonable choice of shoots when the time comes to cut them. And then it tells you what length they should be for a show. Um, and just before the show, cut the bases square, make all the stalks the same length. So when they're displayed in a bundle, all tips are level. If there's any soil left on the stalks, clean them with a damp sponge. Do not scrub them or you will bruise the skins. Asparagus are usually shown in bundles tied with two strings. Stand the bundle up in a basket five centimetres, two inches deep and slightly wider than the dimension of the bundle. Pack the basket with moss and decorate the surface with parsley sprigs. The judges will look for straight, brightly coloured, plump stems with the scales closed. Short, crooked, thin, or shriveled stalks or those with the scales open will considered be considered defective and that says how to transport them for the show it tells you varieties of everything in these books as i say pest and diseases such as asparagus has the asparagus beetle asparagus fly and it tells you how to deal with them slugs asparagus rust Violet root rot, hello fossil, <laughs> um, and frost damage, and then you get some little pictures of bugs and things, and what rot and things looks like. Um, and as I say, they're very good for telling you how to begin step-by-step -step guide to successfully growing vegetables and fruit growing. <laughs> Hello, Fossil. Hello. Yeah? Yes, Fossil? Yes? Why are you on the table? She wants my attention. Um, oh, and there's a little bit at the beginning, like um, a diary. 
so it's uh, I'm assuming it's the author I don't know um, and it's month by month but as I say this is for England and then what to do what you should be doing this week for example this is August week two run the beans will now be coming into full production look over the plants every two or three days pick the beans while they're young and tender be careful not to miss any hiding beneath the foliage these will rapidly fill out, harden and ripen, ripen, using up the resources of the plant. And then it's in and sweet corn. So you've got a nice week by week or month by month. Ah, oh, it must be, yeah, it's weekly because this is August week two, what to do. In the greenhouse, what to do. In your fruit garden, what you should be doing at this minute. And then it begins with the vegetable of the episode. It's got a very short um, rundown, half hardy, what it is, when to sow, sizes, yield. And then it tells you a little bit about the background of it, what soil and site, how to sow, and very detailed pictures. And then care and development, so why it's growing, what to do or not do. Container growing, so if you want to grow them in a container, how you can do that with beetroot. Because this sticks this episode with the beetroot, obviously. Forcing, about that. Harvesting and storing. And then, as I say, the exhibition tips, if you're growing them for shows, what the judges look for. And then again, back to pest and diseases of beetroot. And then what diseases they get. And then this is a little rundown in every book about um, when you see, say, this, for example, brown with the blistered leaves and you go across to what the probable causes are. This is quite a good um, section for every vegetable and fruit. So it tells you if this is happening, you look at what's happening with your crop and then it tells you the possible causes and then within the book it tells you how to deal with that, whether you can save them or if you need to burn them or whatever else. And then it goes through all the different types of varieties. So this is different beetroot varieties in this book. It gives you all the names, different varieties. If you wanted to order the file for them and all the different types, and then as I say, there's always a section of something else at the end, and this is about compost how to make good compost. Which again, I've covered this in many videos, my versions, and they give you different ideas different ways things to build and so on and so forth so I really like these books as I say they're a very good go-to covered just about all the main crops and encourages me to have a go at something I haven't grown before which is getting very few and far between now. I'm starting to now look at more exotic things, which obviously I could grow here and know nothing about. And I'm also getting in slowly into herbs a little bit more. But most vegetables I now grow. Haven't got many soft fruits yet. That's something else I'd like to get into. And some more fruit trees. So, I hope you enjoyed this little brief episode of one of my, I call this one garden book because it's a set, but I have a few more garden books to share with you that I will do so in future episodes. So do look out for those and let me know if you've got a favourite gardening book. If you'd like to add the information on that below, I'm sure that will help many people. So... I don't have homesteading books. I would really love that. I'm not interested in animal homesteading, just gardening and growing books. 
Um, if anyone can link any books, their favourite book. If it is an animal book, do link that because obviously I've got many viewers that might well be interested in that too. And of course they might then look at your channel to see how you do things your way. So put your channels below in a comment and see if we can find you some new community. So until next time, happy gardening and maraki.